Okay, so let me ask, how are you today? Did you listen when we read that passage of the Bible? Now, now, I'll ask you for once. This is how you find out if you listen or not. Can you just tell your neighbor the chapter of the Bible we read? Which book and what chapter? Can you tell your neighbor? Can you tell <laughs> Which book of the Bible did we read and what chapter? If you are looking like you are holy, you are lying. <laughs> Which book did we read? If your neighbor did not get it right, just wave to Jesus. Wave to Jesus. Amen. I don't know whether it's one on the right or left. No, there were two thieves beside Jesus. One right. Once we wave, I know that there's one beside you. Is there anybody who did not get it right? Eh? It is well. But as we were rounding off that passage, I think from verse 33, 34, uh, it just dawned on me that this is part of spiritual confusion. John the Baptist came and said, nobody should eat, be fasting. I came, I said, it's okay to start feasting. You fought, John, you fought me. So which one do you want exactly? <laughs> That's what you call doctrines, praise the Lord. But I believe that God will straighten us out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, you know, Someone once cracked a joke. I, I think it was um, one, like we say, mechanic locally. I was just, you know, driving past. Um, I was around the workshop, and someone said, "How are you?" And he said, "Ah, we're managing Nigeria." And I was wondering, where else would you go? You know, some people just say they are managing Nigeria, but where else would you go? That the day Jesus asked his disciples, "We also go away." They say, "Where else will we go?" Because you don't have money to travel. Where else will we go? <laughs> because if you had the money, you'll have gone. <laughs> so we better manage this Nigeria properly, man. But don't manage it in a way that you feel like everything is negative. One of the things that I found out, you know, these are days that you use the life and the energy in the scriptures to actually remain strong and fortified. Is somebody feeling me in the house here? First, uh, John chapter 1 verse 4. John 1 verse 4 says, In him was life. That life was the light of men, which was that every time we come to the word of God, we come to life. And one of the things that we should learn to do is to make sure that when everything around us confuses us, we should focus on God. There's one scripture that has actually gave me, you know, emotional stability. I, I think it's in Isaiah 26 verse 3. It says, it will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And that says a lot. It will keep in perfect peace whose mind. You know what that means? Our mind can be on many things except God. And so it's only when the pressure becomes heightened and you don't have any other thing to do. You know, you can keep thinking our money you owe, money you owe, and not do anything about it until the owner comes to hold your throat. <laughs> Just like in Second Kings chapter 4, a woman ran to the man of God and said, the creditor is coming, the creditor is coming. Some of us only seek God for pressure, not for his presence. And he knows this foundation law stands short. But the major thing is that irrespective of what is going on around you, make sure that the presence of God with you is strong. He will keep his in perfect peace. Whose mind? Whose mind? Let your focus be on God. And you know, that also tells me one thing. There are different levels of peace. There's constant peace. There's perfect peace. Which means that the longer your heart is with God, the more it intensifies your peace of mind. Which means you cannot have peace today and not have it tomorrow. But as long as you keep your focus on God, because things will always change. Genesis 26 tells us there was another famine outside the one that was in the days of Abraham. Isaac had his own. And that is why one of the basic principles of Christianity is consistency. Please say with me, consistency. God, Jesus is the same yesterday, the same today, will be the same tomorrow. Things will change. Jesus says, you watch the weather, you know, things will change. I was thinking recently, and I came to an understanding, that whatever expressions we are experiencing in our economy today, we have had before. Does somebody agree with me? I remember before the last administration in Nigeria, some of us who are online, before you jack you will know this, when uh, President Jonathan was in government, the first time the exchange rate got to 300, 400, it was as if Nigeria would crack. As a matter of fact, if someone remembers very well, 
there was this insinuation that after 100 years, 100 years of amalgamation, Nigeria was supposed to break. Does somebody remember? As Nigeria broke it. <laughs> then I remember that particular year, I had to buy dollar for 520. I shouted, Nigeria, what is going on? Who would have thought that you would be more than double? Hello, somebody. There's nothing new under the sun. The only thing that must be renewed with you is his mercies. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. These are days you have scriptures that give you energy before you step into the day. Reminding God, he daily loads you with benefit. Don't step out weak. Make sure that every day you step on the street, you are in the spirit. Is somebody in the house here? Because the street will drain you, but as long as you draw from God, you have the deposit of grace to keep fortune ahead. Whosoever says to this mountain, listen, it's not the problem that is the problem. The problem is when there's lack of power. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Mark 11, be removed, which means it's bigger than you, but as long as you remember you have a big God on your side, it makes mountain low heels. May the Lord show up just when we need him in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying to someone here, let's always focus on God. Let's keep our minds on God. It may not be rose, it may not be so exciting. I, mean, I get reminded of prices of things. I, I, and I found out that the price that puts you under pressure is, is, is the one you need the most. <laughs> For some women now, the price of fish is the problem. The one that first stressed me when this price hike happened to us, I, I, I love sausages. <laughs> a few months ago, I bought my lovely sausage. There, there are some products I've stopped eating. They will tell you, one of the products I eat the best used to be sweet corn. But right now, I've had to eat my beans without corn. <laughs> the sausages have not been able to, to divorce it. <laughs> so this last one, and it was like 1,005. Ah, I'm having everything. <laughs> Three times. You know, three times means my food for three years, if the price is three times, I've eaten in one year. What will happen in another year? Ah, the Lord will help us. I mean, if you have a project now, I was discussing with someone, I was yesterday, the one that is stressing the person the price of dough. For you, what's the price of dough? What's your business? Your dough still opens up. So, <laughs> it is the things you need <laughs> that actually puts the pressures on you. But, I love what the uh, 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 what Apostle Paul wrote. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. As long as you are going from glory to glory, there will be supply of provision. There's a level of glory where you manage. There's a level of glory where you have extras. Once you move from one level of glory to glory, then it is according to his riches in glory. Which means that once your grace rises, your stress reduces. You know, Easter is coming, so I pray for someone here. Life will be easier for you this Easter. As, as Easter is coming, life will be easier for you in the name of Jesus. Because all that Jesus did was to come and break the power of death. Death means drain and reduction, and that is a message of resurrection. Which means on the level of life where you are, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is waiting to lift us above every kind of pressure in the society. Can somebody agree with me and say loud amen? amen. And, and so I'll just encourage. In the midst of all the cares and concerns, let's just celebrate God. It's the same yesterday. Times will change, seasons will change. It does not change. The same yesterday, the same today. The same tomorrow. In the ancient of days, God has seen the most economic recessions globally. <laughs> Hello, somebody here. I, 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 there's a local adage in southern Nigeria um, that says, you need to ask an elderly man or woman, the old, what they have seen that their eyes have entered the socket. They have seen too much. Okay? <laughs> Let me put it properly. That means, an elderly person has lived 80, 100 years. I've seen enough. The, the eyes are going backwards. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
It's the ancient of days. He has seen many things. And that is why he can assure you why he declares the end from the beginning. God knows at the end of any form of economic recession, there's a resurrection to lift you out of this level. May God show up when you need him. But the thing is, remember Isaiah 26 verse 3. He will keep in perfect peace. Please help me, perfect peace. Oh, may God take you to a deeper dimension of peace. Perfect peace is a type that Jesus had when he was sleeping in the storm. Which means that no matter the stress, it doesn't touch your soul. Is somebody with me in the house here? You may be broke. It doesn't stop you from smiling and singing. You know why? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. There is a dimension where the just shall live by faith. And there's another dimension where the just shall live by his own faith. Did someone hear me? Did someone hear what I said? There's a dimension where we are in touch together, but we're not in the same covenant with God. There's a dimension where we are moving together, but our pace differs in spirit. There's a dimension where we are all exercising faith. There's a dimension where faith is according to the beholder. So these are days where the just shall live by his own faith. Which means, even though we come to God together, when we go, whatever you receive and retain is what is God is going to use to work things out for you. And I pray that mercy will reach you wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ. I have made up my mind these days to keep my mind on God. Why? I have a responsibility, a choice, to make sure I'm thinking more about God more than the things I need. Then God has a responsibility to give me peace so that the pressure will not disturb me. He will keep in perfect peace, but he whose mind is stayed on him. We keep our minds on him, he gives us the peace we need. And one of the ways I found out that this works best for me is that any time I feel broke, any time I'm wondering where will money come from, any time I'm disoriented, disenchanted, any time I want to throw tantrums, just, you know, just throw some temper, you know, just react, I realize my reaction will not change anything. It's only his provision that can set to me. And so what do I do? As a deer pants after the water brooks, I take my soul into his presence. I take myself, listen to me. The Bible says we should keep ourselves within the boundary where the love of God can reach us. Jude chapter 1. You are the one, like the deer in Psalm 42 verse 1, that will go and look for that presence. It's like this. You are hungry. You are the one that will go to the mall and go and buy the food. Am I making sense? You have a need. It says, come to the waters if you thirst. Isaiah 55. You are the one that will go to where you know the provision is waiting. He could send it. He could channel the rivers of water. But what about if you have to drink from a fountain or a well? You go there. So you go to the presence or you create the presence. If there's no room in the inn, then create an inn in the room. Create his presence. Let, let the atmosphere for your spirit be as natural as it when it was created. Every living thing will only thrive in its natural environment. Our souls are not designed for pressure. Ask fish if you take it out of water to land, you have killed it indirectly. Because it's not supposed to be breathing air. It's supposed to be taking oxygen from water. Am I making sense? So every time you find that they are under pressure, please use that pressure as feedback. What's the feedback? You are out of rhythm with nature. Everything around you is no longer natural. That is the indirect meaning of stress. Once stress comes, it means you are being stretched beyond your limit. That is not the you. That is not where you should be. So every time that comes, the wisdom there is to do like the psalmist says in Psalm 42. The deer is panting for the waters. Why? I survive best. I relax best. I express serenity when I'm inside water. So, where is our spirit created to thrive? The presence of the Lord. That's why after God created man, did that in man, 
That's why the hello somebody here. So the moment you equate worrying to losing money, at least you worry less. And if you don't now, if you don't know how to stop it, just look for somebody who is a comedian, somebody who likes to laugh. That's, sometimes when they get very moody, it can be very bad. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just saying to someone in the house here, yeah, learn to run your life at a profit. Look at all the things that drain you and take from you. How do you stop them from reducing you? How do you run your mind? How do you run your day? How do you run your emotions? We were at a People Care Fellowship some times ago, and we were discussing, you know, how to manage money. And I was saying, do you realize that for some people, disorganized life, disorder, makes them waste money. You know that when you rush out during the rush hour, you pay more. Especially because maybe you are waiting for a tricycle or a, a bus, you don't get out of time, you just hop on, on a bicycle, you know, on, on, on a motorbike, and you pay double, just go on the express. You do that every day, and you wonder what takes your money, disorder. Lifestyle. Praise the Lord. You, you find out that every day you wake up in a mood. And because you are not happy, you don't start your day strong and well. What does happen? You don't make money. Because money moves in the direction of energy. The moment you lose energy, you lock up money. It does not come. So every day you wake up worried and disturbed and angry, you have lost money. So why don't you look at the things that you are doing reducing what God is giving rather than thinking that the devil is taking. It's not the devil. It's a lifestyle. Praise the Lord. I hope I'm making sense. I, I, I was speaking at prayer solutions yesterday. By the way, if you aren't, were you blessed? Can we celebrate the name of the Lord? I was saying something yesterday. I said, for everyone, every Christian, be careful this day. These are days of desperation. Please tell me days of desperation. First Kings chapter 3, two women, came to Solomon and one said we were sleeping and this woman at night took my son and I said that is not the devil that is craftiness and crookedness. These are days when even those you thought were straight and honest, by the time pressure comes and begin to break their values, you'll be shocked if they were Christian or not. And I was saying be careful. Be careful because those you thought you knew, by the time pressure comes, they will do wrong things at night. Because in the dark hours, when this is the expression of character, what we do when you know nobody will find out. And these are days when characters are cracking big. These are days when someone says, I'm a brother or sister, still be careful. Because title is not the same thing as values. Am I making sense here? So, you know, these are days when we know whether we're Christians or not. There are many people that once they have problems, you don't see them in church. I, I don't understand. It means you don't know God. <laughs> you know, the fact that we come to talk together does not mean we're in the same covenant with God. It, I usually put it this way. When rain is falling, you never know trees without roots. But the moment there's dry season, that's when we begin to find out how deep we have gone. Every time there's pressure, people dry up very quickly. When, when everything is rosy, when, when church is exciting and moving, you don't know Christians. You only know churchgoers. But the moment... The moment God begins to ask for intense commitment, that's where he realizes whether you are a Christian or not. Jesus did that in John chapter 6. He fed 5,000. There was a big party going on. Then he began to speak to them. We are going on a transition. I'm going to crucifixion. I need to change this physical bread to the bread of my flesh. Everybody went back. From feeding over 5,000 to 12. If you were in that church, wouldn't you think that Jesus had a problem? It was sifting those whose hearts were right. Why? It was about to enter a new phase. Most, when, after all the thousands he fed, fed, how many people were praying before the day of Pentecost came? Only 120 of them. All of them had gone. Why? They were bread seekers. They said, I know you seek me for bread. The moment I make a demand on the covenant, we will know whether you're Christian or not. And it's happening big time. Some people don't even want to bother about tithing. Some people don't. But people are just dropping their commitments big time. Let me tell you the mistake with that. There are times and there are seasons. Everything you sow now is what you reap next season. So if you allow pressure to make you drop your standard now, you have stressed yourself the next season. Don't forget. If I don't say anything again today, I think I've saved somebody's soul. You have to understand. Again, this Christianity requires consistency. Please let me consistency. It is the lily of the valley. If you are down there, it's the one that will lift you up. 
He is the one that rules in the affairs of all men. If anything is going wrong, he's the one that changes the equilibrium to make sure he favors you. All I believe God for is that everyone who is consistent with God, the covenant will work for you. Mercy will work for you. Favor will work for you. When these seasons change, God will remember you first in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So I, I'm just enjoining this morning that let's keep our minds on God. Let's keep our minds on God. Let I, I mean, you do it yourself. You, you talk to yourself. Okay? You inspire yourself. And, and you create the atmosphere by yourself. I, I, I was saying earlier that, I mean, these days, before the stress comes, I sing a song. I use songs to drive away stress. <laughs> On your phone, smartphone, is an extension of your spiritual practice. Use it. Let the songs be playing. If you know you want to sleep and you are not happy, let the life in that song, Christian song, Christian song, Christian, please help me, spiritual songs. The Bible says we should speak spirit with us. Not the one you'll be waking up. You don't know the source of the song. Don't let's go there. Let me encourage you smallly. <laughs> okay, tell me some of the songs you sing. They told the senior visitor, sing one of the songs of Zion. Some people know more street songs than church songs. Sing, say to your neighbor, sing the songs of Zion. I wish I could open your phone. The first song that comes is the one you have been singing. Hmm? You know, when pastor is visiting, you change the one you are singing. I understand. But when rapture will come, the angel will not allow you to change it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can someone say with me, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Can we take it together? Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning. Just worship the name of the Lord. Let your mind be on Him. All I have needed, God has provided. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. I, I was really wondering, uh, this is optional. I mean, this may not be for those of us who are online. Wondering whether to ask you to join me, but it depends on your mood. If you just love God enough, you want to stand on your feet. We can do this together, but I appreciate the fact that Sanward is on their feet. And we say to him, Great is your faithfulness. Oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with you. There is no shadow of turning with you. You change not your compassion, you feel. As you have been, you forever will be. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. In mercies I see. All I have needed.
15, you say to him, Pardon for sin. Pardon for sin. And a peace that endureth. Peace that endureth. Your own dear presence. Your own dear presence. To chant unto God. Strength for today. Strength for today. And bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all my Blessings all my Everybody together. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. New mercies. New mercies. All I am needed, your hands have provided. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We sang pardon for sin and peace that endures forever. Lord, I ask, let this not just be wasted words, but let them be worship words unto you. For every heart seeking answers, let your light and your wisdom flow to us in the name of Jesus. In every area where you need, we need you, show up before it is too late. For every prayer we have offered that seems prolonged, Lord, cut short the feedback. And for everyone that does not know what this week will hold, reassure them before they leave your presence. Thank you for open heavens. And thank you for the ministry of your angels that brings assurance to everyone. We are grateful for your mercy. In Jesus' name we worship. And someone joins me to say loud amen. Amen. Please say to someone beside you, the Lord strengthen you. Your hope will be strengthened in the Lord. In Jesus' name. Please take your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. I just feel like saying to someone, I'm so excited to have you in church today. And I pray that our excitement will continue with you throughout this week in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 15 verse 13, he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be up." rooted uproot means you pull up you pull out and you take out and I pray that whatever confuses us on spiritual matters God will correct it for us in the name of Jesus Christ this has been our thrust this month as we continue on our discourse and spiritual adventure on spiritual upgrade and we're looking exactly at how to make sure that we upgrade our spiritual status and understanding way, way out of every kind of spiritual confusion. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not, not the author of confusion, but of peace. What that tells us or suggests to us is that confusion is deliberately orchestrated. There's an author of confusion. Anywhere you have confusion, someone created it. Am I making sense? Someone orchestrated it. And it's going on. You have the truth Anytime you have the fake, someone made the photocopy. <laughs> someone tried to recreate it in a way that you don't understand it anymore. And there are many of them like that. The devil came to Jesus and tried to confuse him in Luke chapter 4 during the temptation and said, if you are the son of God, <laughs> if you are the son of God, this was after Jesus had left the baptism of John in Luke chapter 3 and God had spoken to him, this is my beloved son in whom I well pleased in Luke 3.21 and the devil came after he had fasted when he was spiritual he was in spirit he was still tempted Jesus says if they do this in a wet tree what will happen to a dry one <laughs> I'm saying those who are anointed have been tested what about those who are not anointed ah we should not talk about that one <laughs> you know what he's saying here no one is above confusion the devil tried to confuse Jesus he said to him, worship me. And Jesus said, get behind me. Why am I emphasizing this? If you don't know the truth, you open yourself to confusion. For you shall know the truth. Then you don't need deliverance. Because the truth is your deliverance. It shall set you free. Praise the Lord someone here. So many things are happening on the street. What do we mean by spiritual confusion? Anything that makes you lose clarity. All of a sudden, you are not sure of what you thought you knew. Spiritual matters... Just, you know, 
they just you get mixed up in your mind over them. I, I gave you an example. When I was growing up as a baby Christian, anytime I hear the word Lord, God, they just confuse me. I'm wondering which one is Lord, which one is God, <laughs> which one is spiritual, which one is supernatural. I'm just confused. But I pray that the spirit of light, the spirit of truth, will reveal to you what you need to know before the devil confuses you in the name of Jesus Christ. And so our focus is more on the negative confusion because you can actually have, like I once explained in the past week, you can actually have positive confusion. Like, I mean, a rich young ruler came to Jesus in Luke chapter 8 and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He was sincere. He wanted to know. And Jesus says, go and sell everything he had. Then he decided, I mean, he could not sell. You know, for some people, they have money, but for some other people, it's money that has them. <laughs> Once money controls you, the covenant cannot control you anymore. You are not in control because God gives commandment. A commander it means that he's the one in control. A soldier knows that his general is the one in control. You obey order. So when Jesus said, go and sell all you have, the man said, no, I, I, I don't like that command. <laughs> I, I cannot sell. So he went back sorrowful. Why? The money was controlling him. The covenant was not controlling him. But at least he was sincere. But there are times where it is deception. It's not clarification. The devil is also of confusion. Craftily making you, you know, like Jesus says, maybe this will help. He says, a good man planted wheat, but while men slept, the enemy came and he planted tears. So when he woke up, they could not differentiate them. <laughs> they looked alike. That's confusion. Everything looks the same. And you have them. You have them. It's going on these days. You have, you have churches that are being filled, but the power there is not right. Have you seen some of them before? It's confusing. How do you explain that? You will have thought that churches that have the real anointing, the Holy Ghost, are the ones that will be filled. Why? Lies sell more now than truth. If you also check the feed, you respond to more. Check the feed, you respond to more. You respond more to gossips. You respond more to comedy. If someone posts evangelism, you will not respond. Up. Am I making sense? It tells you the culture of our generation. Everything is watered down. We're not taking root. Everything is shallow. We don't even like hard messages. We don't like deep ones. We don't like meat. We prefer the milk. If I give you an assignment now to carry out a research in the Bible, you can bet that almost 90% will return you back to Sender the following week. We give Bible reading plans. How many people follow the plan? In fact, that is why we brought the plan to church. <laughs> to prolong the service and read it to you. Hoping that one day a week will not make you weak as a Christian. Because you're supposed to read it seven days a week. Have I making sense? The culture we are in now, we resist demand and commitment. And it's a problem. Because it's showing up big time in our lifestyle. It's showing up big time in our family with our children. I am believing God and we prayed, especially last week, that evil will not enter this city in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some Christians in this city, if the kind of terrorist attack actually is not to happen here, some people will forget church. In fact, you will erase what's assembly from your phone. <laughs> no, no, I don't do church anymore. God forbid, bad thing, Abby. If you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. God will do Please hear me. Exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or think. What is the common denominator? Ephesians 3.20. According. Please help me according. According to the power that is at work. Not in us, in you. Please help me at work. If the power is not active, grace is not flowing. The power must be active. So you come to a point where your personal commitment and depth with God determines your standing. The Bible says, let him that thinks he stands, take heed, lest he falls. There are Christians only assuming they are Christians. He thinks he stands. When pressure comes, that's when you will know you're standing in spirit. I pray again, God will not allow pressure to come to us in the name of Jesus Christ. But the issue we have here is that the devil, knowing he does not have power, has one thing that he uses to replace power. Craftiness. Very crafty. <laughs> very deceptive. Very confusing. 
You will see wheat and tires. They look the same. You will see two Christians. The fake one may speak in tongues more than the right one. You will see witches ministering in churches. Sorcerers that are prophesying. Witchcraft life on altars. It's confusing. Sometimes ago, late last year, I was deeply disturbed. One man of God took up some of these white garment churches and lambasted them. Then one of the elders in those white garment churches came online and practically told him to shut up and said, if he ever answers again, he will speak again. He said, a lot of your pastors, Pentecostal pastors, they come to us. I was very ashamed. I'm sure some of us will have read that kind of thing. I was very ashamed. He said it online. And I did not see reply from many pastors abusing him. Some of them go and see them. I met a pastor recently, last month. We were in a project together. And he was telling me he was a Muslim. He told me a particular person. He, he grew up as a Muslim. His father was a native doctor. He's now a pastor. And he was telling me, he was just shaking his head. He was mentioning certain names. This is life. Just, just this upper month in January. He was telling me the pastors that come to see his grandfather, the native daughter for power. So now that he's a pastor, he was a Muslim, he's a shame. And you see these things work. Listen to me. The devil works miracles. Jesus says, you will, you will say that day, you will work miracles in your name. I'll say, I don't know you. Because you have used alternate power. Hello, somebody here. That is why it's as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Walk by the Spirit, not by sight. If you let somebody else lay hands suddenly on you, some of the problems will be waiting for your children. Because some of the things, I was cracking a joke of somebody that went to a native doctor and a millipede wanted to determine how long he will live. He said, never. <laughs> some of the things we expose ourselves to, the demons make covenants with our forefathers. Some of us are still struggling with them today. So please, please, please. I have no other God. <laughs> Is someone here? You have to remind yourself it's only true God you will serve. But sometimes, like Apostle Paul came to Ephesus in the book of Acts and he said, he sent some, saw some people worshipping and they wrote there to the unknown God. Some of us don't know the God we worship. And that is where confusion is. Jesus said, it is written, get behind me, Satan. If you are not reactive, you are not sure of what the word says. The truth will make you free. So online everywhere these days, you see people, you know their lifestyles, you know what they do, how they are corrupt, how they are cheating, and they are making it more than you. Is it not confusing? It's very confusing. I mean, I, the Lord will help us. But our, our own today is to make sure you protect yourself. All I'm saying is, the pressure in our society today creates the ample opportunity for confusion to thrive. Poverty is a good reason for occultism. Does somebody agree with me? When people are really poor, they use their children to make rituals. <laughs> Corruption is an option of poverty. So when the devil creates, I remember a man of God once said something to us a long time ago. He said, when they were in the occult, this is what they do. I, and I read it. I did some bit of Yoruba in school. Has anybody heard of what they call it, Bono? So this is what happens. These sorcerers and diviners, they will go to a particular town. They will release incantation, release all this powder thing. So everybody in, in the town will begin to get ill. It is business. Say it be business. Why? The moment everybody is falling sick, you come and see them for solution. It's business. They do it. You may not know. It also happens spiritually. I tell, one day, no, it wasn't anybody, it was actually my dad. So my dad was very concerned. So he said, um, some people, all these preachers came to him and they said that uh, they want to pray for your children. I said, what did you say? He did not feel it. I said, I'm sorry. Don't give them my name. I said, you know what I said? I said, they're businessmen. The moment they collect one name, they will create problem in that realm. So you keep coming back. All those people at the bar beat, they are customers so. When you finish one, they will create another story. If they are finished using your mother-in-law, your stepmother, they will look for your step-grandfather. What he did is business. <laughs> Have you noticed that those who consult them, they keep going back to them? It is business. 
the gift I have, I can create that business. But freely have you received, freely must you give. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just know that the pressure of survival makes you a candidate and potential victim if you don't know the truth. Desperation will lead you to solutions that are not God. And that's where confusion starts. That's why you must stay with God. Praise the Lord, somebody. All I'm saying is, don't make yourself vulnerable to spiritual confusion. Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Let me read that to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Therefore, take heed how you hear. Please help me how you hear. Oh, you're not saying like you have energy. Take it how you hear. <laughs> For whosoever has, to him more will be given. Whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken. I don't know how many truths Facebook has taken from you. You seem to have a bit of God's knowledge. By the time you listen to many voices, they could be confused. Many spirits enter you. Always remember this. Everybody you listen to, a spirit enters you. The words that I speak, they are spirit. So you don't know all kinds of men. A friend of mine what, told me one day, another of his friends went, went to preach, I think some few years ago, for another pastor in this city. He entered the man's bathroom, so he just cleaned up before the service. You know, the pastor had not come, so he came in earlier to use the bathroom. So just find out that in the service, Miracles were happening. All kinds of things were happening. Prophecies, impartation. People were falling out of their anointing. So the old pastor now called him and said, God bless you, man of God. The Holy Ghost moved to do. He said, yes. He said, but I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, did you use my bathroom? And I said, yes. I mean, because uh, before uh, uh, you came, and I said, ah, it is where Holy Ghost came. <laughs> it was later I found out that the man of God, I can't say the man of God, it must be a boy of God. <laughs> uses, that thing he uses, what he uses to lay hands on people. You listen to that kind of person online. You don't know the spirit he has put inside. He says, take heed. How? Please tell me how. Say with me how. Jesus says, you may have many, 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 many mentors. You don't have many fathers. Those that will watch over you and carry you in their bosom. So, how you hear matters because once you open your spirit and another one enters to cast it out becomes a problem. Trust makes that deposit gain ground. He now says, once you miss that and you open yourself to confusion and lie, what you seem to have, the little you seem to have, is taken away. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. I pray those who are looking for those to destroy, they will not locate you in the name of Jesus. I say they will not locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thought of something. Maybe I'll ask somebody to help me do this. Who can, who can help us quote a passage of the Bible? Anyone, anyone, anyone in the congregation. Online, you can type it, but you may not be able to say it. If, if you can say, can you come forward? We prayed about boldness this morning. Who is bold to take the center stage? Just come. So just tell us the passage of the Bible you are quoting and Psalm quote the Bible. Very Psalm 61, verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. Wait, 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 wait. Are you sure what you're saying? Are you sure? Are you sure that, what, okay, what, what, what uh, you can't, the verse does not matter, it's the content. Can you tell us the passage again? Psalm 61 or 62 verse 1 and 2. When the devil comes, will he hear all? In, in, in the court of law, will you give the judge options of fact? I saw him, I'm not sure if I saw him. Which one would the judge take? So, please don't speak to her. Are you sure of what you quoted? Yes. So, what did you quote again? Hear my cry. Why? Hear my cry, O oh God. What, Attend. What passage of the Bible exactly? Psalm 61, verse 1 and 2. Okay. 
Hear my cry, O oh God. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. So I will ask again before the epic. Are you sure that <laughs> are you sure that text is correct? I, I said we should be quiet. Somebody is projecting. You are, you are the people that make students see answer before them. But you know what? She got part of what I wanted us to see. You know, initially, until she looked back, she was not sure. What I want you to say is this. When you step out on the street, you are not absolutely sure. You open yourself to confusion. Once the devil begins to recall the scripture, if, it, it, now, in Genesis chapter 1, when the serpent came to tempt Eve, what did he say? As God indeed said, what is it creating? Doubt. That's deception. Once you are not absolutely sure, confusion is close by. Thank you very much. God bless you. Am I? Does somebody get the message now? You are the one that to be very, very, very sure. Maybe quickly because of time this morning, let's ask ourselves, what are the issues that open us up to spiritual confusion? Apart from not being sure of what the Bible says, not being sure of God and truth, your relationship with God, your depth, your covenant with God, when you are not absolutely sure, there's one thing you must not do. You must not isolate yourself from other people who can balance you anytime confusion comes at you. Does that make sense to someone else? That's what happened to Eve in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. When the serpent came to confuse her based on what God said. She was out of fellowship. She was in isolation. And isolation is one of the critical atmospheres the devil creates for destruction. When the devil wants to deal with you, he will remove you from those that will balance you. Did you hear what I said? The moment the devil begins to create problems in a way you don't want to fellowship with other people, he's looking for you one-on-one. -on -one. That one-on-one -on -one is where confusion starts. Because he knows that if he speaks the wrong thing, and if you ask a fellow believer, they will correct it. So he will make sure you fight them, you disconnect from them. So when he's feeding you, you'll be listening to him. Is somebody with me? Yes. He makes sure Adam and Eve were not together. He made sure that Eve was in isolation. Then he began to bring deception. As God indeed said, what is happening Doubt what you thought you knew. Take heed how you hear. Look at it. For what you seem to have, by the time the devil bombards it, it seems to go. Confusion. Deception. Doubt. There are variations, versions. Brothers and sisters and uncles of confusion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In Numbers chapter 11, let me read quickly verses 4, 5, and 6. Numbers 11. Now, the mixed multitude. Please help me, mixed multitude. Now, I, I want you to see how our differences in values can actually create confusion for us. The mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So, the children of Israel also, please help me, intense craving. Let's ask ourselves, what are the kinds of examples of intense craving in our climb these days? Fake success. Success without balance. Joshua wanted to ask good success. You succeed financially, your family is suffering. Some people have cars, they don't pay well for their children's school fees. It's someone here. Some people spend more money at, in, in, in restaurant than they give their family at home. Some people do big boys outside, and what they are owing is bigger than their size. Hello, somebody here. Some people take pictures with their family on Sunday, but immediately they drop them and go, they go and meet girlfriends. It's fake life. You are not answering. You are guilty. Because you didn't smile at that one. You are knocking on somebody else's wife at night. So everything looks glossy, but gloom is, uh, is waiting at the end of the day. So it's intense craving. Corruption is intense craving. Intense craving for dollars will make some people get more corrupt. You will write what is you don't have on your CV. I write projects that they never saw you there. I say you are the project manager. <laughs> 
Well, you need to make money and get a good job. Intense craving. Hello, somebody here. <laughs> Since you laughed, you are guilty of that one. Have you? <laughs> now, the mixed multitude were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also, please help me, also. That's a key word. This is where values begin to drop. Also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? Why were they weeping for the meat? It was because of the mixed multitude. Some people make you drop your Christian values because of pressure on the street. You lose a spiritual. It says in verse 6, verse 5, We remember the fish which we ate freely. <laughs> Freebies. Freely in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now, please let me now. <laughs> now our whole body is being dried up. There's nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. <laughs> all I'm just saying is this. When you connect too deeply with those that don't share the same Christian values with you, you open yourself to confusion. And, and something happened. This state, state was changed. In the same Numbers chapter 13, in verse 3, the Bible says, So it was when, please help me when, when they had, when they had had the law that they separated all the mixed multitude from Israel. When you continue to listen to the perfect law and look at the perfect law of liberty, it will not be easy for you to get carried away by dropping standards in the society. It was because they lost the truth that they imbibed confusion. But when they went back to what God said, by themselves, they disconnected from those who were messing up their Christian values. So please, take responsibility. Don't let people who don't know God, confuse you about God. Don't let Facebook confuse your future. There's too many junk. Even those who are not called are creating confusion on Facebook. People ask you to do all kinds of prophetic actions. They are all confusion. Someone says, I just came back from the mountain. I used my call to do this. I don't see the places in the Bible where the Bible is saying that this is your call that should be the blessing. Hello, somebody here. It is sentiment. I, that I bless you. If this one to one day I used to bless you, when did they start blessing you? All kinds of things that look like it, but are not it. You will know the truth. The truth is set you free. They tell you, listen to me, emotion is confusion sometimes. Once you are stared, oh, you don't understand staring. Once someone wows you, wows you, wows you, wows you. You, you will have sown your tax salary before you realize you need common sense. <laughs> Please, say to your neighbor, be sensitive. Don't be sentimental. It's very key. Take heed how you hear. It is through what you are hearing that the spirit of confusion enters. Guard your heart with all diligence, which means you are serious about protecting your spiritual space. Don't let anybody who did not learn work well come and confuse your destiny. <laughs> you hear what I said? Some people, they, they, did not, they did not finish their graduation ministry school. They used you <laughs> for practice. I remember a senior colleague of ours, he became a pastor. Ah, he now came to the conclusion years after. He said, I'm sorry, everything I've been teaching is wrong. Uh, my wife knows that. Somebody will know very well. He said, I didn't know. I didn't know. So we'll confuse the congregation. We'll come here. I said, I'll confuse you. Which I was confused. <laughs> he didn't go to Bible school. He was using it as experiment. <laughs> life, life, life. I'm talking somebody who's still living and alive. They were confused. They were not like the Berean Christians. I'll go back and check if their pastor is correct or not. Even if I speak, check the Bible. If it's not there, don't take it. Nobody should add anything to the world. But the problem we have we're too busy to double check. And that is why people use it for business. It's business. Business. Confusion is big business. Corruption is big business. Fake product is big business. Go to Alaba. You will see big business. Fake product, big business. 
the devil is someone aware the devil is big business. Oh, you don't understand. Do you know how many churches that is not they are not of God? Big money is coming there, big business. Some churches are for money laundering. Big business. Have you heard of them before? Ah, don't worry. May God not take you there. Big business. Dark place on the web. Big business. Big business. But you will not be a victim. I say you will not be a victim. Let me, is somebody being blessed in the house? Let me round this up very quickly. I, I, I feel like I can see chicken on somebody's table today. Listen to me. No matter what the economy is saying, you will see it well in Jesus' name. Uh, is it not in the Bible, Psalm 23? He has set a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You read John chapter 21. Jesus called the disciples and said, Children, have you any meat? Before the answer, I said, Come. He has set fish and fire waiting for them. I don't know the fire would used to cook the fish. All I know is supernatural. God will feed you. Listen to me. In Christianity, believing is sin. It's not sin, is believing. If I say it, it may not be food as it were. All I'm saying is whatever you desire and you need, God will take care of it for you. In this economy, you will still live well. Your health will be sound. No matter what you lack, what you need, you will not lack it. God will take care of you. I pray for every man here. God will take care of your responsibility. Please hear me as I feel this in my spirit. You will not know shame. Whatever your standard is, it will not drop. Whatever your obligations are, God will make sure that your nakedness are not exposed. No matter who needs to collect something from you before the embarrassment, God will provide it in the name of Jesus. You will not know nakedness. What people should not find out before you fulfill the obligation, they will not find out. God will protect your credibility. I say God will protect your credibility. Everyone you have an obligation towards, God will not allow anyone to disgrace you before you fulfill the obligation. This season will pass over and it shall be well with you. I thought by now you put your hands and say, Father, thank you. I like to say to someone in the house, please, I think I like to close here. There are many things I like to say. I'm just hearing in my spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. I pray you will not make a wrong move. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not, not, trust God, not on your understanding. Don't let flesh destroy your future. Don't let cravings, temporal situation, make you take a permanent decision on what will bring permanent regret. Don't let now take from you there. Times change, seasons change, but God is the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. You are wise. You are skillful. You have experience. You have exposure. But it is only God that can fulfill your expectations. No one can receive anything except it is given to him from levels higher than him from above. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace. Don't let pressure take your peace. As long as your mind is stayed on God, Isaiah 26, 3 again, he will be put in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on him. Problems may go on around you, please. Every day, take responsibility to stir his presence and let's see how the faithfulness of God works with us. I love that song again. I love you, Lord. 
for your mercy never fails.